So this week's episode has been delayed somewhat by having a rather busy week. Um, it's today, Sunday of the week, and I usually try to get these out Monday or Wednesday or so. Uh, this week, we, so last weekend, uh, Sean and I went and bought a dolly trailer, this little one axle dolly trailer, and picked up a car to start disassembling for parts. And so that, that's underway, which is excellent and uh, made good progress uh, but so I, I've had a lot of effort on that direction um, didn't put much into the show uh, although I've been taking some segments and I intended to go ahead and, and feature what we were doing with getting the car and and the beginnings of disassembly in the trunk and so forth but I want to I want to hang off on that uh, a little bit so this week um, I'm just going to put together uh, an episode from uh, a video that I've already taken on uh, the uh, 528 on our 1988 BMW E28. And so we're going to do some um, tune-up aspects with the, uh, replace the plugs and the plug wires, spark plugs, spark plug wires, uh, including disassembling the loom and reassembling that. Uh, I'm also going to show the alternator. Uh, so. So we're going to um, just focus on the Beamer for this week, uh, this episode. Next week I will um, come back to the salvage issue and feature that and the processes that we went uh, through with that and, and how I've gotten started with that. Um, and, and so then the, the second half of the week um, we went to Lauren's parents' house and dropped the kids off. Uh, it's her fall break at the college. And so we traveled up to Ohio to see my uncle, who has nonverbal autism and is in a group home in northwest Ohio. So uh, it was nice not having the kids with us, just for the fact that, you know, it's about a 10-hour drive each way. And that expedited it and made it a much easier drive, not having them with us. And um, Lauren is going to be taking her GACE exam, which is a uh, certification for education in Georgia. So it's a real big, important test. So she's taking that on Tuesday. And, um, you know... I've, I've started the process for claiming unemployment benefits. Uh, my severance has officially run out, so I got my official severance letter from the college, and I've got an appointment with the Department of Labor on Wednesday, uh, so I'll start claiming that this coming week. So, you know, it's, it's a bit of bureaucracy, but it's really nice that that program exists, and, you know, I feel really fortunate that even though I think we can progress in a lot of social uh, programs, uh, you know, we have to be thankful for what we do have, and, um, you know, this, this will help us to fill in the gaps while we're trying to figure out how to uh, proceed forward and, you know, and so forth. The salvage business, I think, has a lot of potential, but it's going to take time to build up momentum and inventory and so forth, so there's going to be more investment in the front end before we start getting paid, so to speak. So, uh, so you know, um, still real uncertain about what's next and how we're going to proceed exactly but we've taken some significant strides in a few directions and um, you know I'm just trying to keep my head up and uh, you know keep keep putting my feet in front of each other and keep going for our plugs and wires replacement it's pretty easy operation you're going to need a socket set with extensions now for the 528 they're not real deep so it's not you know it's not hard to get to on this car as we'll see in the video uh, i recommend using a plug remover socket this uses a 13 16th size the plug remover socket is a specialty socket that has a rubber boot on the inside to suction the socket and pull it out you can get your fingers on this so it's not an absolute necessity but you will need either a deep set 13 16th or a socket remover uh, plug remover uh, this is a pretty easy job one to two hours you know um, particularly this depends on if you are replacing the loom or if the loom came with your uh, wire set and you know this is a really easy operation I'll give it a two out of ten but there is a lot of danger involved in the respect that you have to make sure that you get the the plugs threaded right and that you don't over torque them as we'll talk about in the video so just take your time it's an easy thing but you know you don't want to get cocky with it you don't want to you know rush it take your time work through it um, you know the, the organization of the wires is helpful with the loom as we'll see uh, it makes it you know so that the everything is nice and organized um, 
you know, keep the old wires. They're, they're typically not totally bad. They're just, you know, it's better to replace them. Uh, so keep those and, um, you know, uh, same thing with the with the loom. Uh, it can be reused. So if you have a set that doesn't have the loom, this is the plastic piece that organizes the wires, then you can reuse the old one as I do in the video. So I was coming out here just to kind of look at the cars, see what's you know going on with the processes here, and I figured I would go ahead and do the beginnings of the tune-up by changing the spark plugs, and I popped my first spark plug wire off. Look at that! The previous owner, presumably the one owner who had it for most of its life, but somebody basically rather than buy a new plug set, you can see the difference here. This is what it's supposed to look like. Rubber, right? This orange rubber that actually suctions down to the boot and also, or suctions down to the uh, spark plug right there. It also makes sure that no crap gets in there. And these first two, you see, are both just spliced and pushed on there. This also means that it's not going to maintain a consistent connection because it's not actually suctioned down uh, it doesn't have the boot to do that. That is ridiculous. What a what a discovery. So uh, first thing up, <laughs> as soon as I get back on my uh, on my phone again, is I'm going to order a wire set because I would guess by the look, the age of this, that these are probably original or at least been on there a very very long time. Because I can't see a maker on them. But that is absolutely ridiculous and could very well be the cause of this. Uh, if just even, you know, running the engine, I mean, just messing with it, it could have, uh, you know, once these start loosening and you're not, you're not getting a spark to go all the way through down to your wire, it's not sparking, it's going to run un, uncooked gas through there so you get the real heavy petrol smell in the air. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty significant, pretty big sign, and you can see, just looking down at the situation, it doesn't look like it's been like this too terribly long, it doesn't look too gross, but that's a big find and should make a fast improvement on the run. Alright, so we're here with the 88 BMW 528E. We are going to be replacing the plugs and wires today. Good thing to do at the same time, especially if you've got an older car, uh, like you know all these 5280s are older. You don't, if you bought it used, you don't know how long it's been since you've had a tune-up. So we got the new plug wires. I got a set from CarQuest. The first set that I ordered online uh, was actually the wrong size. It was already set up. It had the loom, which made it a little bit fancier. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But the inside of the actual plug connector, the part that buckles onto the plugs, was the wrong size. So even though it said that it was right and it had the right configuration, that connector was wrong and it would not seat. So just to make sure that we're not in that same boat again, I took one of the spark plugs, one of the new ones that we're putting in here, and test seated it. Look at it sure it all fits in there and it does seat really really securely you can feel it click all the way down you see the rubber is the right length everything is good to go so <clears throat> that's our first uh, first point there is just to test to make sure that your wires and your plugs are going to be right uh, I pulled this off as I was just starting to get into this car I haven't had it uh, in less than a month now then just getting into the systems trying to make it run right and that is just a terrible, terrible thing. Oh, and you can see the wire inside is all tore up too. Oh, it's amazing that this thing runs at all. Because the first two of these plug wires both just jacked up. Just jacked. And you can see even the ones that have... Oh, see, that one just came apart in my hand. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, these <laughs> plug wires definitely, definitely need to be... 
Uh, in fact, that one I'm going to have to get out, uh, probably with the needle nose. Oh, nope, I got it off of my finger. Look at that. Even the ends of them came off. This is just terrible. So uh, I'm not sure if this is this is original stock. The rubber looks so dated, but I don't see uh, the BMW logo or anything. So who knows? But these these plug wires are toast and definitely coming off of there. Uh, we are going to have to, so they call this the loom. One thing I just uh, love about these is it has this system for channeling all your plug wires so you don't have to worry about which one's which and getting this bundle of wires and everything and it has that nice little bit of heat shielding too. Buckles very easily just right on the top there. I'd left it loose from pulling it last time as I was just getting into the system. Um, you also have, now on this one, you've got numbers on there. You'll see that my new ones do not have numbers on them, so I'm going to need to do something to uh, write numbers on and get a sharpie, whatever. Um, but you can see your firing order starting at the bottom. It goes five, one, three. This one has lost its number, but that's six, four, two, and the C goes in the very center, that's C for center, and that is coming from the, uh, the, the volt uh, coil, coil, the voltage coil. Um, so that's going to be real simple. Again, you know, you want to write down your firing order. You can look it up online if something goes wrong, but five, one, three, I just think about it as odds, five, one, three, six, four, two. That's our order. And so we are going to, now again, this set does not come with the loom, so I'm going to have to take the loom off and um, actually pull the wires out of it, disconnect it, and replace the wires with the new ones. All right, so we've got our old plug wires out. You can see this one failed pretty spectacularly as I just tugged on it for it to come out. I really cannot imagine these being original, but the one thing that does seem in that favor is that on the boots that are attached, uh, attached to the distributor, it says West Germany. So this set, at least the boots, maybe some people will actually disassemble these, but I doubt it. It looks much too complex for disassembly you could, but uh, it's got a little locking mechanism there, whatever. I, I think it's unlikely that the previous owner transferred these. Now, these are so jacked up with these all sorts of ridiculous uh, unneeded. Why do they have these on here? It just does not, you do not need these zip ties. Totally unnecessary. You don't need to hold it in place. That's what this thing is for. So somebody's been jackassing on this, but we were going to fix it up and do it right. All right, so we're working here on putting the new wires into the loom. So we've got the loom apart, very easy. I wouldn't even recommend using a, you, you could use a flathead screwdriver, but the, they popped off so easily, and a flat blade, you'll have more of the temptation to actually break them. It's very easy, there's just a bunch of them, very secure, see every little notch here is another one. Both sides have them, you just start at one end, popping them off as you go, it came apart very easily. Uh, definite kudos to BMW for that plastic, having sat on the engine for, these are again original the ones I pulled out are West Germany, so uh, they that sat on the engine for 168,000 miles, uh, and it's still good plastic, good strong plastic. The these pieces that it, where the, you got the connector there, I mean I'm very impressed, and not a single one of these tabs broke off. So what I've done is a range from longest to shortest, because your six is going to be way in the back there, and one up on the front. Uh, so I've got the longest one here. The, the two longest are actually the same length, but uh, so I've got the six already in here. You see, uh, routed it again, trying to go all the way to the end. So push it over to the side after you enter the channel. Uh, you've got these nice little guiding. You can get two into each of those. And I'm just going to work back, putting them in, uh, going from longest to shortest. And as I put each one in, this one does not have the numbers on it, unfortunately, because this is basically a universal set 
that CarQuest sell that's just all the right lengths and everything in the boots, but uh, doesn't have any of the extra bits, including it doesn't have the loom, and it's not numbered. As you can see on the original, the original has these numbers on it, <coughs> which is typical. So, because um, you can't check, you can't run your fingers along it because it's going into the loom. So I've got some white electrical tape. I'm going to, for each of them, uh, wrap the end here where it's going to connect into the distributor with electrical tape and number them so that I can get them all placed right. Once I've got them all in, I will close up the loom and reinstall. Alright, so I've got all of my tips here all numbered. I tried to number them multiple times and went ahead and wrote on the wire itself, although it's harder to see just being a little extra anal retentive on this because once you get it in there you can't follow with your fingers any of the wires because you have to open up this trunk, the so-called loom. But got all of our plugs all lined up. Uh, you'll notice that this loom presumably was used either for the 4, the straight 4, or the straight 6. Um, you see you got these extra holes here, presumably the 4 would go through this one and this one but for the six, you do the intermediaries there and there. And we've got it all lined up just to keep everything nice and bundled right at the end. This also keeps the wires even better uh, stained in there. Once I get it uh, back together, I'm going to wrap the, the tip there, a little more of this uh, tape just to get it all good and snug in there. And then it'll just be a simple matter of putting it back on. Alright, so we've got the loom back together. I hit it with some of my favorite grease there, that wheel bearing grease, and got it nice and oiled up. I have to say I'm very, very impressed with BMW. These are, uh, this is definitely the original loom from the markings on it, and it is in 100% like new condition. Uh, again, just with a little bit of greasing, it's, it's nice and, uh, you know, got a nice finish. Uh, not a single one of these popped on disassembly and reassembly. And that is absolutely incredible considering this sits right on top of the engine. I mean, it is, it is getting, and it's actually bolted to the engine, so it is directly transferring heat from the engine and still the thing is in perfect condition after almost 30 years, well it is 30 years, the car was made in 87 even though it's an 88 model, so this is its 30th <laughs> birthday. Uh, absolutely amazing. So. We're putting the loom back on, run it under here, and starting the bottom there with the five, you'll feel it not just connect, but it'll click down. Get a nice solid connection there. Five, one. I'm just, and this is again why it's so nice to have them numbered. Five, one, three. Feel that nice click. Good and seated there. And I haven't transferred the hood over there, but here's our wire there, our center, which is the only one you really don't need a number on because it is in physically the center and it does not go to the engine, which is obvious. So uh, no worries on that. So here's our six. distributor all hooked back up again. I'm going to reset this down on the engine and just thumb tight these for right now. Come back later. It'll allow it to stay positioned. But still have some wiggle room. I also uh, something else that I did here, uh, I went ahead and grabbed my shop vac and backed out all of the recesses, which had all sorts of gook and uh, crust in them. So uh, we are set with the 
plug wires. Next thing I'm going to do is actually take out the plugs themselves. And, uh, you know, normally this isn't necessary if it's a car you've been working on already and removed, but I went ahead and hit them all with some PB Blaster just a little bit around each. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything, it'll just combust, uh, so there's no, you know, issues with that. But it will, if there's some uh, rust around, if it's real torqued real tight, uh, you got to be careful, particularly people that don't know what they're doing, torque down too hard, and, you know, uh, who knows how long it's been since these spark plugs have been out of this car, so they could have 30 years of crust and rust on them. Uh, I've seen stranger things, so next process is simply going to be, and this is a real easy, some cars are tough to get to, this is real easy, you see them, they're all nice in a row, nice in line, everybody's ordered, the Germans love that, and then it's just going to be bup, 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 going down the line, we're going to be replacing them with this Bosch Super Topper, and I'm going to have to check and uh, ensure that the gap is right, but we'll be installing those as soon as I get these out. Alright, so we're midway through our tune-up here. I already got the spark plug wires on. I've got two of the old plugs out and new plug wires on. You can see these are the plugs that we are pulling out. Not bad. They're Denso, which is a good brand. I not sure off the top of my head, but I think these might be platinum, which really, there's, you know, all sorts of discussions about all this stuff online, but it uh, seems like widespread agreement not to use platinum on this particular model. What I'm putting in here are Bosch Super Plus copper cores, and they are a little bit different than the uh, Denzos configuration is slightly different and I am trying to get you know OEM as much as possible although we did get aftermarket plug wires because the uh, OEM are not actually Bosch and uh, really hard to find for this exact model given my other issue uh, with the wrong configuration okay so you can see not exactly the same this one is taller the little mount, it's got different configuration. You also need to make sure that your gap is right. Out of the box, these super pluses are coming in somewhere around probably uh, 0.025. You want to widen them out somewhere closer to 2.8 or 30. And one of these you can get, you know, any parts store, real cheap. Put it on your key ring if you do this sort of thing. So, gapping it out just a little bit, not a huge, huge issue. If you threw these in there without gapping them, probably be fine, but, uh, you know, you want to try to get as close to specs as possible, particularly with German cars. This dielectric grease, which I've got some more, but might as well use the previous stuff that came in the pack. The uh, dielectric grease here, just greasing the, the tip just a little bit around and getting it all nice and greasy. You don't want to put a lot of anything on there. You don't want any crud build up. But just a little bit of dielectric grease goes a long way in terms of making sure it doesn't uh, have problems with conductivity, corrosion, and so forth. So set that aside for a moment. So after you pop out wire, which I'm just using, uh, these are 13 sixteenths. You see got this special boot that pops on so you can get it out. These aren't hard to get to. Some cars are way down in the engine block and very difficult to extract without one of these. This you can get out with your fingers, but I still like having the, the special attachment. Uh, I've got it on a swivel just to um, give me a little bit of extra room there. And that's the maneuvering room. And again, they're just nice lined up in a row. And you want to just, you know, take your time. You don't want to put too much torque when you're initially popping them. See, that one broke. No problem. And I hit them with a little bit of PB Blast just to make sure the threads didn't have any problems. And they are, you know, it's a long, very fine thread. So you want to take your time. And I 
once you get some access to it, you can pop your boot on there. This procedure is pretty straightforward and, you know, somewhat universal. Just depends on your configuration. This is nice and easy access. It's got lots of room on the side of the engine there. Uh, you can tell they designed these cars to be worked on. They're, you know, even though it's a mild looking sedan, it's really a tuner car just waiting to be explored by the right owner. All right. And that's the point of having the boot. It just it makes it very easy to extract. You can see these are a little bit burnt up. Um, might have some issues with, uh, it looks too rich. It's got the black soot. They're not rusty, so they haven't been in there that long. Um, but that's probably an issue with the leaking injectors and intake system and everything. Uh, you can end up, if you have vacuum leaks, you get the wrong gas pressure fuel regulator and screw up and get too much gas and then it burns. Funny like that. So that's the procedure. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this out. Alright, for putting in your new plugs, so here's our Bosch. Now, it depends on your car. This one, again, it's pretty easy. I think I'll be able to get my hand onto all six of them, but I've already got a little bit of dielectric on it. And uh, you'll want to finger thread these, again, if possible. It is possible on this. It's a little tight in there. Um, you can also use like a heater hose, something uh, maybe that size, right, that you can feed down in there that just suctions on there. Turn. There's a number of different ways. Uh, you can get it in there, but the key is you do not want to cross thread it. You want to make sure that it is going on exactly the direction it needs to go in and the threads are just perfectly aligned. You can see how fine that is and that's actually drilled down into the engine. So you do not want to get the threads mixed up and cross thread it and then push down and torque it and chew up your threads. That it was a very bad day that happens to you so uh, you just want to get very careful finger it on there if you feel any resistance take it back off keep trying take your time and uh, be gentle with it now once you've got it on there you're going to I'm not done now I'm gonna you know tighten it down when you get it tightened in there you're not going to tighten it very hard you want to tighten it I think the box says 20 newton meters 21 foot pounds, 28 newton meters. But if you don't use the pressure, just I tend to right as it as it binds, take it just just maybe another inch. That's you know 10 degrees of rotation max. You do not want to push down too hard. You do not want to have your plug chew into your block. So once you've got it on there, again I'm going to tighten it off camera. But once you got it on there and you get your boot ready. Uh, I did notice that these boots, uh, the connectors are super tight, these are long um, plugs, so it takes, you can see how much just it, in my hand here, how much force it took. So I'm going to kind of work them a little bit with the old plugs and get it a little bit looser there. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, because they're real tight coming out of the box. and. Uh, the first couple I, I struggled to get on, so I started popping them on, um, on the, an old one first to get them loosened up before I put them on there. So. Alright, and our tune-up here is complete. We've got the new spark plug wires on there. Very nice. All looking real good. Everybody's good and seated. You can feel it should be nice and secure. You know, if you don't feel it click on there, then you missed it. It's rubber, so if you hit it from an angle, you can get up between the boot and there, and it might fire, but it's not going to fire properly. You, you should feel it click down in there to uh, uh, get a full, proper connection on it. But that's it. Should be good to go. Um, last, very last thing we got to do is uh, replace this. Place this wire here, which very very simple. Just one more. 
pop that off. And put the new one on and we are done. Oh. <laughs> For our next project for the episode, we are going to be replacing the alternator in the 528D. It's a pretty straightforward job, especially as alternators go. I place this on the easier side of the spectrum. I've placed a, I've replaced a number of alternators over the years. Sometimes they are real easy to get to, sometimes they are not. This is on the easier side. You will be removing the air box to, in order to access it, but otherwise it's a very straightforward operation. Because this doesn't run on a serpentine belt, but rather has a series of V-belts, uh, it's important that, you know, it, you check the belt, make sure that it's in good condition. If it's not, it's more difficult, but uh, if you're going to be replacing the belt, you should go ahead and replace all the belts because you're going to need to get, uh, in order to get the belt off, you will have to uh, take off the belts from the other systems as well by the nature of the beast. So if you're replacing this belt, just go ahead and do the others because you're going to have to take them off in order to access it. But all, all pretty straightforward. This sort of system is very easy tensioning. Uh, it's all very straightforward. I'm not replacing the belts because my belts are fine. Um, but, you know, do keep that in mind. Uh, also note that the alternator that is featured in this video is wrong on many levels, as we will see. Uh, so part of this is undoing some of this, the, the idiocy of the previous owner and the bizarre way in which he had this in there. So he actually had the wrong alternator and it's jacked in there. Very odd. So part of it is undoing uh, the, the, what's been done to it. And note that the proper installation, the bracket that I'm trying to figure out how to get on there, is supposed to be attached to the engine itself and not to that weird little piece that the previous owner had welded in there. Uh, also, very important note, make sure that you fully charge your battery uh, whenever installing. This is just generally good advice for new alternator installations. Uh, you want a fully charged battery when you start the car. You do not want to overload a new alternator because it can burn them up. Uh, so make sure that while you're doing this, you have your battery on a charger. All right, so today we are going to be fixing this uh, hack job here. We'll be looking at that in just a second. We got our shipment in from Bavarian Auto Sport, a great specialty company that particularly focuses on BMW and Mini, which contemporary minis are built by BMW. So I got a bunch of different filters and gonna be going through the car now that it's running good. This is the key that we're gonna be installing today. This is the alternator adjusting bracket. It goes right under the air box. You can see it's a very particular, very specialized piece. Not a very expensive thing. I mean for a little piece of metal it's expensive, $35, but well worth it once you see the uh, hack job that's in there and again it's specially made for it so you know don't cheap out it's worth 35 bucks in this scenario so we'll be installing that and popping this into the air box here might have to get another piece i haven't fully done that yet but uh first thing we just knock got our nuts 10 10 millimeter right there and there get the air box off i'm going to just disconnect it from the boot, which has been off recently, so everything's nice and oiled. Brand new boot, got some new uh, used but new to us working math in there. Everything's running great. Now we also need to pop the connector bit off here just so the air box can come out. Connected. Everything should be good to come out of there now. Very easy procedure. Some cars, uh, for example. All right, so we are updating here on the progress of replacing this uh, rather jackassy plumbing strap hack. Somebody at some point, you can see it's got a new nut on there. So somebody at some point presumably replaced the alternator and when they did they lost broke or whatever the uh, piece that connects here so we've taken this off and that'll be going to the trash heap this was the bolt that we took off and it was 
incorrect. It was the right locking bolt, but the or nut, but the bolt itself was 11 millimeters, meaning it was probably standard, not metric, because you'll never uh, find an 11 millimeter bolt on a stock German car. It was probably actually a standard American, not uh, metric, and it just does not feed in there right. And I don't know if you can see the. The, the threads have been completely shorn off. So somebody just absolutely force torqued this on there and ate up the threads and at the same time really did damage to the locking nut. So luckily it's, as in most German things, pretty universal. So one of the interior locking nuts that I took off of the air box when I put the MAF on, I'm going to use that because you see it's compatible. And I went through my, I've got I bought a, when I got the 944, I bought a bucket of bolts off of a 944 where they had completely disassembled a 944, and this was all the stuff that wasn't parts, so it was all the, the bolts, retaining things, whatever, and um, nuts and so forth. So I categorized it all into various buckets, depending on sizes, and I've also got a, uh, buck, uh, a bag full of the really big bolts, so that stuff and bigger. Um, and then all the washers and so forth. So I was able to go through that. Um, <clears throat> German cars are all using the same bolts. Again, 8, 10, 13, 17 millimeters, pretty much almost everything you're going to find on a German car. And so we're going to replace this piece of junk. And you can see it's all twisted. And I was just, what a hack job. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So uh, that is going to go in the trash. I've got a bolt here. I got the one that's just the right length. I looked and looked through there, found one that's just the right length, so I'll be able to torque it on there, but it's not going to be a big old, you know, hanging out thing to rust up. So uh, we're going to put our new bracket on there and tighten it all up. All right, so update on the alternator bracket. A couple things I've noticed. One, this thing is really in there very very poorly and I'm gonna have to look and see if this bracket is actually correct the way in place that it's sitting and everything and it's just really piss poor uh, welding job in there it's not even I mean it's got this little tack weld there which is just not good so I'm wondering if the if this is the original bracket or also something jackass or if it's even where it's supposed to be my guess is that it should actually be over here and here's why. When you hook this thing up, the, you can't get it over there. Right? So it's just uh, almost, but doesn't quite reach. So my guess is that this thing ought to be about an inch over, which my next guess is that that is why, that's why it had that jackassy uh, plumber strap in there. Another thing, the bolt that I was putting on there was not quite long enough, so I'm going to put this thing on there for retaining and that will I, I got this out of my 944 bucket and it had a little lip right there that wouldn't let me put it through so I dremeled that down with a grinding tool on the dremel rotary so now that goes through there and I can figure out whatever the best way to hook this thing up is if I can't get it all the way over there I might actually end up using just a little bit of that plumber strap just to extend the hole to there, uh, but it won't be nearly as reliant on it, it'll be much more static, so that's currently the plan if I can't rotate it far enough over. You, as you can see, once you remove this, then the thing rotates freely, so it's a matter of tensioning it, right? And that's the issue, is that it's just not going not gonna to get over there, because again, my guess is that this is actually off, that it ought to be over here, or perhaps even this is the wrong piece and there's something else that's supposed to be there. Again, something I'm going to have to look at images online and see what I can figure out. Alright, so here we have my slightly better rigged version here. I did have to reuse a little bit of the plumber strap that I pulled off just to extend this out about an inch there. I still think that there's something wrong with this plate. I'm going to have to research that to figure it out. But for the time being, at least here, we can you know, tension this. This is much more taut. 
no, no give in this anymore. It's nice and solid now. So uh, not perfect, not like new, but given what I was working with, this is a heck of a lot better. Next thing I've also got to check is for some reason this wire here um, is off. It's blue for, I presume, the alternator. So I'm going to have to look into that as well. But uh, just trying to undo all the stupid stuff that the owner did to this over the years. But it's back running good and at least we're on the road. All right, so we have received our new remanufactured alternator. Got this from O'Reilly's. One of the nice things about O'Reilly's is all their remanufactured parts have lifetime warranties on them. So here is our new alternator. Oh, it's a big boy. 90 amp. <clears throat> all right, so here's our new guy. And it is very clear that this is not the same configuration just by where these through bolts are. Completely different housing than the one that's currently in there, uh, which would account for why it had the plumber strap, why actually putting the new piece in there didn't fix it, didn't, uh, you know, had to jury rig it to get it in there. But we're going to put this in there, real easy procedure. First thing, we're gonna pop off our sensor take off the mass effect or mass uh, airflow sensor from uh, the boot here, pull our intake, and then we'll have access to the alternator. Do make sure that you, whenever you're doing anything electrical, go ahead and take off the negative so that you're protected there. But it should be a pretty straightforward operation. This one looks much better. It's got both, both of the points of contact. The one that's on there does not have this secondary one, so the I don't even know how the thing is working exactly, um, but this one definitely looks like it's better. Here's your volt regulator, and everything looks good to go back here. So we will pop off the one that's in there, and uh, real easy procedure, no problem at all. Alright, so we have our air box here now removed, very easy to get off, just popped off the mass airflow sensor, set it to the side there, just the one uh, clamp there on the intake boot, and that's off, and now we got plenty of working room here. So you can see here, now I used a little bit of the plumber strap from the hack job just to extend this bracket because it was very much in the wrong place it would not attach totally different configuration this is not the same alternator not the same at all and see take off the boot there and we'll remove the nut on the back of this to disconnect it of course I've taken my battery negative off so everything's disconnected and you can see here on the main trunk line this is the, the positive line here, that this has been just taken off and set to the side and zip tied there, and that is just ridiculous. <laughs> I just can't believe that. Looks like there's a little stud here that probably ought to be where that plugs into, but it doesn't have any screws on it. Again, this is definitely not the right alternator. So we're going to start by taking off our bracket here, just removing that and setting it to the side, real easy. Uh, of course, just the bolts there, we'll take that out. Once you take this off, the whole thing rotates freely, and you can very easily just pull the V-belt off. And as soon as you take it off the tensioner, again, this thing is just going to rotate. Very easy to get the belt off. Once we get the belt off, then we will have to take the bolt out and then remove. All right, so we have here our two alternators side by side, and you can see they are not even close. So I am going to assume that O'Reilly's got this right. It looks like it's going to be in the right position for putting the uh, bracket 
over there, the tightening bracket, you notice this one is way off. Just not even the same configuration and it's amazing that it even stuck on there. So we've got the, there's just a single bolt that, a single retainer bolt there that goes through right here, which just buckles in right there. Fortunately, I dropped the nut. Oh, no, wait, it just fell right in there. There it is, okay, good news, good news. Okay, there's our nut. So, just goes right through there, very easy, very simple. You get that one on there, you get your J-belt on, you're good to go. Well, we have partially and reinstalled this, but we've run into a couple of snags. The bracket on this side that you run the bolt through was pinched this way on the front because the one that was in there was the wrong size. And so when I forced that piece open, it was weak, broke off. So now we only have the back bracket. I'm going to have to see if I can replace it's a whole piece that also holds, I think that's a power steering pump underneath there. Um, so I'm going to have to see if I can find that daggum whole bracket and replace that. And then the other issue is just n absolutely nothing is lining up on this side. I really don't think that this piece here is original. This piece here. You see the really crappy welding job in there. I really don't think that BMW did that. So my guess is that it is after, you know, it is something they did. So whatever this is supposed to attach to, it is not lining up at all. I don't think it's the radiator, the uh, alternator's fault. I think it's the crappy weld-in piece of junk there. So in order to get this in here, you can see the bracket. If it's on this side, it's going to get eaten up. It's going to restrict the tines of the fan, so it's got to be on the back side, and then it's way, way off. So I'm going to have to really experiment with this. Probably have to put a long bolt through there to get it to line up, but that's basically what we're shooting for at this point. Alright, so we have completed our alternator reinstall. We have the proper alternator in there and running good. There's a little vibration on it because I couldn't get the, the, the front part of it broke off during installation because of a improper installation. So I have the part that broke off. I'm gonna talk to the local guy and see if I pull the part off, if he can weld it. But then there's a little still, it's not perfectly idling. I, I think that's on account of the leaking intake, which I still have yet to do the intake. Uh, seal rebuild. I've got all the seals for the intake system, fuel injectors and so forth, but uh, now this actually sits down in there properly and the bracket is in there properly. Everything's tension good and running smoothly. Now one weird thing, as soon as I turned the car and as soon as I hooked the battery on there was a uh, warning beep. It started dinging, 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 dinging and just absolutely would not turn off. Uh, that is a new symptom as of in actually installing the alternator correctly. Uh, the blue wire, the small negative wire, uh, was not actually hooked up to the old alternator, so uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm wondering if the former owner had done that to stop it from dinging, but that was the cause of all of his electrical issues because the alternator would not be working right and the system would gradually drain. It's just terrible. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Dear Lord, I come to you this week in humility filled with anxiety and uncertainty about the future. While I trust very deeply that my life is in your hands, sometimes it's hard to see what the way is forward. Please bring peace and direction and guidance into my life. Please do the same for my viewers. Help them to see your purpose. Help them to feel your love. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.